Hey guys, my name is Kaushik and welcome back to LitCode. Chrome extensions are a tiny program that runs on the browser environment, but it is very powerful. It can communicate with the native window applications. For example, I have built this extension that can open any of the programs that I used most commonly. For example, if I click on this VS Code icon, you can see that it is actually triggering the window native applications. So whatever the applications we have, we can open that from the Chrome extension. This is working because of the Chrome native message support. So in this video, we are going to learn how to use the Chrome native messaging API and as well as we are going to see some of the HTML and CSS stuff. So I have created a folder called Chrome native messaging and I'm going to open that in the VS Code. And within the folder, I have another folder that is to have all my icons like Eclipse, Slack, Spotify and the VS Code. And also there is a PNG file that's going to hold the, I mean, that's going to be our extension icon. So first we are going to create a manifest file. So manifest.json that is required to build any of the Chrome extension. Within this, we have to give some properties like name, description, version, and the manifest version. So I'm just going to copy this from the Chrome extension documentation. And these are the most required thing. And here we'll name this as lit code. And description is going to be open window application. And version is 1.0, that's fine. And manifest version is must be 2, that's also fine. Now to deal with the native messaging app, of course we have to get the permission. So we'll just have the permission first. So permissions. And permissions would be declared within an array. And we are interested on the native messaging. And also we need the browser action that is going to hold my pop-up page. So if I go back to this overview and here you can see that we need this browser actions and I'm just going to copy paste and default icon is not necessary. And here we are going to have a pop-up.html. Now of course we have to create this file. So pop-up.html. And just give exclamatory and enter that will give you this boilerplate code. So I'm just going to change the title as lit code. Okay, so that's it. We are done with the very basic stuff. Now we can load this extension in our browser. So just copy the file location and go to your Chrome extension, Chrome colon slash slash extensions, and make sure that you have enabled this developer mode. Now click on this load unpack and paste the address you copied and select the folder. So that should give you this lit code with version and the description and we got some error as well. Let's check. So it says that permissions and native messaging. Okay, that's because of my spelling mistake. So let's correct it out. So native messaging and just go back and try to clear it up and reload and that should work fine. So as of now, we are able to see that we are getting this lit code and it has nothing as of now, but we are going to add some data into it. I'm not a great designer in terms of HTML or CSS. So I'm just going to use this CSS framework that is Bulma. So let's see how to use this. So I'm just going to copy this link here, CDN link. And within the body, I want a container first. So div.container. These class names are coming from our Bulma. And within the container, I want to have a card. So div dot class card. And after the card, also I want a footer. And within the footer, I'll give the class name as card hyphen footer. This class name, so everything is coming from your Bulma. So I remember some of the things, some of the things I don't remember. So of course I'm going to copy and paste. So if I go to this component and if I select this card, you can see that we are getting this card, right? And card hidden. So I want something like this. So I'm just going to copy this, guys. Okay, and here we'll have this like let code. And if I go back and check now, 
it should give us this thing right and after that we want to have some content so i'm just going to copy this so after the header we are going to paste it here and then of course i have to close this tag now here we'll write a paragraph and that's going to have a class called subtitle and that's going to say open window application so let's go back and check yes it's working now it is not in the centers but i want this to be on the center so we can do that by saying here has content i mean has text centered no okay so it's centered now right now after that within the content i'm going to have four buttons with icons right so if i go back here and i'm going to lay out that within this columns class so i want something like this so four columns so i'm just going to copy this and paste over here within the column i want buttons with icon so let's go back and go to your element and click on this button 2000 years later and i want like this so i'm just going to copy this first code here and paste over here now of course we will close this okay and i'm not going to use this i rather i'm going to use my image tag here so src then followed by icons slash first we'll have the vs code and alt is going to be code and also i want to give a id to this button so that i can identify whenever i do some click action based on that button id i am going to open that particular application so here we'll name this as vs code let's go back and check okay so it's working now so similarly i'm going to do this for rest of the buttons i mean rest of the columns and let's add id as well so this id should be now eclipse and this should be spotify and here it's going to be slack okay so we are almost done with the design i believe and but this in the vertical i want this to be on the horizontal so i can add a class called is mobile again that's coming from bulma so if you want to know about it probably you can check the documentation now if i try to open this it's going to give me this horizontal layer now after that also i want a footer and that footer should have like chrome extension chrome native message just to give a good look if i go back here i can see that it has a class called card footer and then card footer item so i'm just going to copy this so within the card footer we will have a paragraph tag and class of this and here we'll say like chrome native message that's it so if i go back and check okay so we are almost done with our ui i think that's pretty much good as of now and here you can see that we are not able to get any of the icon for our extension and here as well so let's add the extension icon as well so if i go back to the manifest file we have a key called icons and that's going to have a array of values where i'll set the size as 128 and then we'll give the file name as logo.png and that should be within the curly braces not within this okay now let's go back and just try to refresh and here you can see that we are able to get this icon and here as well right so if i click on this of course it's going to open the header and this guys and this guy side that's it now we are going to identify in which icon or the button i'm going to do the click action so let's write a javascript file for that so it's going to be popup.js and of course i have to link this in my popup.html so here i can say script and then src equal to popup.js 
and we want to load this popup.js once the page is loaded completely. So for that I can use this keyword called default that means it's going to load the JS file only after the page has loaded completely. Now within this just to confirm this uh, JS page has loaded successfully we are going to have an alert here and say like walking something like that. Go back and refresh and click on this and here you can see that we are able to get some alert that means of course it's working. So now the task is we are going to identify on which button or the icon I'm going to do the click. So we have already set the ID values for each and every button. So, so I can add a listeners to the IDs and I can capture what click action is going on. So here we'll say like document dot get element by ID. And the ID value here is VS code. I'm going to store that in a variable called VS, VS code. And similarly, let's quickly find all the other guys as well. Now we are going to add a event listener, the click event listener to identify which button is going to be clicked. So here I can say like VS code dot add event listener and the listener is going to be click and when there's a click I want to perform something. So we'll do here, right? So to do. Similarly, I'm just going to write quickly for each and every element. There might be a better solution for this, but I think this is pretty much enough for the basic stuff. Both the places has a clip, so we'll just change this. So this one is going to be our Spotify. So just to confirm that the click event is working, I'm just going to have an alert here and it will say like clicked. Yes. So let's go back and we'll just open this again and we'll click on this VS. And here you can see that we are able to get this as click VS. That means of course our event listener is working fine. Okay, we got some error as well and it says that cannot read event, add event listener of null because there might be a spelling mistake I think that I mostly do. So let me just go and check it here. So here on the popup.html for the Spotify we have ID of Eclipse. Okay, so let's just change this here. Okay, so that's it. Now let's try to open this up. And if I click on this VS code, that should open up this alert. And there is no alert as of now. I mean, no error as of now. So so far so good. Now let us understand the concept of Chrome native messaging and how it works. So basically, it's very simple. We need a JSON file that's going to act as a host. And within the host file, we have to specify name, description path of the executable file it can be either exe or a bat file and then it must have a type called standard io that is standard input and output and also we have to specify the chrome extensions id that it's going to make use of so i can simply copy this file i mean copy this code and i can create a folder here first and i will name this as native apps and within this i'm going to create a file for my vs code first so when I click the VS code icon. I want to trigger this JSON file. So VS code dot JSON and within this we will paste our entire thing. Now first of course we have to handle this, this allowed origins and we have to specify our Chrome extension ID. By default each and every Chrome extension will have its own unique ID. So we can just copy this and replace the value here. And after that of course we have to say the path of the executable file is there. In our case, we are going to make it very simple. We are going to trigger based on the bat file. So what we can do is we can just go to run and type this code and that's going to bring up this VS code, right? So we are going to perform the same, but with the help of bat file. So within the same folder, I'm going to create a file called vs.bat. And here we'll say like, start then followed by code so how does it works is basically if i go to my cmd command prompt and if i say like start and then code you can see that it is actually opening the vs code editor correct the same thing we are triggering from the bat file now here 
I have to just specify this. So instead of this path, I can specify vs dot back, and it can be relative path for Windows machine, but it should be absolute for Linux or the Mac. And then we we'll just change this description. This is going to say like opens open VS Code, something like that. Not mandatory. I mean, the text is can be anything. And this is very important. The name. So this name is going to be connect in our system register. So in our system register, we'll have this name. So whenever we are going to connect this using the Chrome extension, this bat file is going to get triggered. So here I can say like com dot let code dot vs code now just copy this file i mean name and go to windows r and type reg edit that is register edit and make sure within this hk current user and then followed by the software and then followed by google and followed by chrome native messaging host and here we have to create the host so right click new and then followed by key and key should be exactly same the name that we have specified within this json file not the json file name it should be the name that is mentioned over here and after that here we have to give the path of this json file so right click and copy path and then just click double click on this default and it will ask you the value data i can enter the location of the file and click ok that's it so this is the only thing we have to do in the system register so in the reg edit we have to add this values if i go back to my popup.js and here instead of this alert let me remove this to do to do as well so when i click on this vs code icon i want to trigger the vs code application so we are going to create a variable called code and by default it's going to be null now we are going to connect to that port using this chrome.runtime.connect native. So if I go back to the documentation, you can see that once the host is ready, and after that we have to add this in the register edit that we already did, and then here is this code. This one line of code can do the job. So I'm just going to copy and paste over here. So chrome.runtime.connect native. And here we have to pass the value that we set in the register as well as that is also available in my JSON file. So I can copy this and paste over here. And that's it. We are almost done. So if I go back to my browser and if I refresh this extension and if I click on this icon and click on this VS code, now you can see that it is actually triggering my VS code. So we are successfully able to connect to this particular application through my a Chrome extension. Similarly, let's do for the Spotify as well. Now here, if I go to the search and type for Spotify, and if I open the file location, so Spotify is in this particular location, so I'm just going to copy this location. And here, of course, I have to create another JSON file. So let's copy this and both the files and paste over here. And I'm just going to rename this to spotify.bat and this is going to be my spotify.json and this name also should be unique so I'm just going to make this as sp so com.letcode.sp that is spotify and here everything is same and this one should be changed to sp.bat right now within this bat file we'll just navigate to the to that particular location so cd and then followed by this um, this location and then we'll say like start then followed by spotify.exe so we are triggering this exe by using the start command here that's it we are almost done now of course we have to add this name in our register as well in the reg edit so if i go back to this reg edit and here i can just right click and new and key and here i can specify com.letcode.sp and within this i have to specify the value of that particular file so let's copy the file path and paste over here and click on this okay that's it we are pretty much done so i can close this probably you can add for your eclipse and maybe whatever the application you want to open from your chrome extension for this demo purpose i'm just going to have only this two guys the vs code and the spotify rest maybe you can take the code from my github repository and you can do the job
So let me close this and go back to the browser. And now if I open this and click on the Spotify, that should bring the Spotify, I believe. Okay, uh, it's not working because we didn't write any code for that, of course. So I have to write the code here. So Spotify. And then again, we'll connect with the same port. So port equal to Chrome dot runtime dot connect native. And here we have to pass the native uh, name. So that's going to be not this one. So that's going to be this one. So com dot let code dot sp. And that's it. We are pretty much done. Now let's go back and open it again and click on the Spotify icon. And that's bringing some error. But of course, we can see that we are able to open the Spotify here. Okay, let's close the Spotify and seems like there is an exception. Let's see what was that. And it says that uncheck runtime last error. So I'm not able to understand. So let me just copy this. And if I search on this page, and seems like this is a very common error. Okay, so let me just have a look on it. 2000 years later. Okay, so finally we got it and it seems like whenever we are going to use any of the bat file or the batch file, we have to use this at echo off on the very first line of the bat file or else it is going to throw us this kind of exception. So I'm just going to copy this and if I go back to my bat files. And let's do for this guy as well. And let's go back to this Chrome extensions and clear this and refresh. And here we are going to click on this VS code that is opening our VS code. And no error as of now. Let's try to open the Spotify as well. And no error as well. Okay, so seems like it has been fixed. But if I close this, and again, we are, you can see that we are able to get this uh, new exception and it says that native host has existed. This is non exception. I know this. So this is basically we have connected to the host and we have closed the host, but we didn't uh, do proper closing. So that is what happening over here. So what we can do is we can add a listener that on disconnect and based on that, we can resolve the issues. So if I go back to this Chrome native messaging, website i mean the documentation here he, here we can see that we have a function called on the disconnect so i'm just going to copy this and if i go back to my popup.js and here we can paste it here so port dot on disconnect so whenever the port is going to disconnect we are uh, adding we are adding a listener to this so it's going to listen if there is any disconnect and then it's going to do the log Instead of log, we can check if there is any error. So I can say like chrome dot runtime dot last error. So if there is any error, we can simply log that. So console dot log and we'll just copy this guy and paste over here. That's it. Now, of course, I have to repeat this for each and every action. So I'm just going to make this as a function here. And we'll say like on disconnect. And I'll call this function here as well. That's it. Now let's go back to our extension page and refresh. And let me open the Spotify. So while opening, we don't have any exception. And while closing, also we don't have any exception. Let's try for the VS Code as well. So VS Code is opened and it's closed. And then if I go back to this extension, we don't have any exception now. So in this way, we can solve this. So that's it. We have done. I'm not going to do for this um, Eclipse and the stack. I mean, Slack. Probably you can do that. Uh, the entire source code would be on my GitHub link. Probably you can check that out. And let's quickly recap. It's very, very easy. Only the UI designing part took that much time. So we have a simple HTML file where we have four of the buttons and we have IDs on the buttons. Based on that ID, we have created a listeners, um, add event listener where we are checking for the click action. So if, when the click is going to happen, we are calling this function called chrome.runtime.connectNative and here we have to pass the native name. And this host name, basically native name in the sense host name, this host name should be exactly same in our JSON file as well as in our 
register ready. If that's going to mismatch, of course, it's not going to work. And these are the mandatory fields, name, description, path, type, and allowed origins. And in the allowed origins, of course, we have to specify our Chrome extension ID value. That's it. This example looks very simple. You might think like what's there in opening an application, but we can do more than this. If you check the documentation, you can probably understand that we can send a message, we can receive a message and we can do a lot of things. So we'll talk about that eventually in the next video where we are going to build an application that can send message to the native applications like the exe application to the Chrome extension. And from the Chrome extension, we are going to send message to the exe file. So that is what we are going to do in the next video. So if you are new to the channel, kindly do the subscribe. And if you like the video, please do the like and please share to your friends. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one very soon.